What's up guys? If you've been watching my last few videos, you probably know that I'm in beautiful Glacier National Park. And the weather prediction for today was that it was going to be sunny and then this storm that we have right now was going to happen tomorrow. <laughs> So I waited, I've been taking some pictures and I wanted to show you how to make travel photos that sell. And I say make because there's a great quote by famous Ansel Adams to say you don't take a photograph, you make one. And I was gonna show you the difference with the light modifier here but there's no sunshine. So instead, let me show you these two pictures that I did. This one uh, looks more like a snapshot. And then by taking something like this and blocking the light, you can make a much better photograph. And these are images that are gonna sell. Also too, remember like the, the welcome signs, the front signs, a selfie. Uh, Everybody loves selfies and exaggerated faces, doing different different things. Maybe even with the pet, with Bambi at the, at the sign. It's a very popular place where a lot of people go take pictures, so why not include some of those images? Just remember to wear clothing that's not, doesn't have any logos like that one. And, or you can clean it up in post, but those are good sellers as well. I sell a lot of pictures of signs of popular spots like this, like this Glacier National Park sign. Another thing that you have to consider is, I've been here um, taking pictures, hiking, walking, and I've been a little bit dehydrated. Wow, that's loud. And, you know, my lips are really red in some of these pictures, so you have to Photoshop that out. It doesn't take a long time. I'll show you here in Lightroom how easy it is to reduce the color and to just make it look more natural. And those are images that are gonna sell. There's a lot of things happening in the national park. And yes, you can go for the traditional beautiful landscape shots and those will sell too. But take pictures of people doing people things. Take pictures of yourself. Okay, it's raining harder. So here's another idea for pictures that sell, and these are pictures that actually do sell quite a bit. It's when you have a big open landscape like this, and then you use a person to show scale. In this case, I'm gonna stand here with a beautiful landscape in the background. So I don't have any light on me, the sunshine went away. So I'm gonna use a speed light. I, the reflector is not gonna help me here anymore because there's no light to reflect. But something like this, simple, open, you get the mountains, the mountains are well lit. I'm not gonna use a polarizer uh, on the water because I think it looks good. And I'm gonna be using the, the app, uh, camera app, so I could remote uh, trigger my, my camera wirelessly and see what I'm doing from, from a distance. So let me get this ready and hurry up and get that picture. Think of concepts, think of what people do in a national park. I've been seeing lots of wildlife and I'm not a wildlife photographer. I don't have the long lenses. I was able to get some great shots and those might sell. But you know, I missed the shot that I should have taken and was all the people lined up looking at the wildlife. That was a shot that would have sold, not the picture of the bear as much as the people uh, lined up on the road trying to get a picture of the bear. Those are different things that you have to keep in mind is how are people behaving in the parks? What's happening? What keeps people interested? Also, remember to get some pictures of the, the buildings and some of the more recognizable businesses and stuff because those seem to sell a lot. 
Uh, some close-ups, some details, wide, showing people, showing a tourist activity. Uh, those usually are great editorials. Landscape photography is a little bit different than stock photography because the timing, the conditions, you're usually trying to wait for the best lighting. Stock photography is more about selling a product, selling an activity, selling something that's happening. And travel photos fall in that category because you're selling something that you can do in that area or something that happens in that area. When you're trying to make travel photos that sell, remember that you can sell in multiple places, not just stock. If you're a good writer, you can write out an article, use your own images, and now contact a magazine, a travel magazine, a travel blog, and your chances of combining the two and selling something are gonna be a lot higher than if all you do is post pictures in stock. There's a lot of ways to make money with photography, and you know we limit ourselves based on what we want to do or what we think we can do. Break out of those limits and you'll do fantastic. You'll have great results. There is a slight misconception when it comes to stock photography. I think it's been sold that, okay, it's windy. It's been sold to a lot of people as something that you can just go out, take a picture with your cell phone or with your camera, with the point and shoot, and that that's gonna start selling immediately and make you thousands of dollars. That's not the reality. The reality is that just like YouTube, people now expect almost like a Hollywood production, better lighting, better cameras, better B-roll. People now expect almost like a Hollywood production, better lighting, better cameras, better B-roll. Uh, and I'm trying to do the best I can to keep up with this, but it is difficult. And that's the same thing with stock. It takes a lot of effort. Sometimes it's as simple as holding a diffuser to improve the photography, but it, it does take work. Uh, it's not hard work if you like it, but it does take a little bit of, of effort. Hiking up a mountain with an extra 30 pounds of gear in your backpack. <laughs> That's not something that a lot of people are willing to do. I did it, I do it, and I enjoy it. But that's part of the effort that goes behind getting those pictures. Using the right equipment is really gonna help you. Making money from your travels is not as easy as people try to sell it and make it to be, but to me, it is totally worth it. I enjoy every step of it, I enjoy the work I put in it, and I enjoy everything I learned from it. Ooh, even, even if it is standing out here in the freezing cold with the diffuser as an umbrella because I left it in the car. <laughs> uh, borrow friends. If you see someone out there, ask them if they can post for you. Do time lapses. Like I said, there's a ton of ways that you can fund your travels with photography. Not just stock photography, but also stock videography. So remember to take pictures of the signs, different conditions, try to get some of the close-ups, selfies. Believe it or not, I sell a lot of selfies of all the places I go to. It is really, really cool. <laughs> uh, I don't remember on Shutterstock, but I'll pop the information here. But selfies do sell quite a bit, and you know, people doing people things, so. Like, like that, I don't know, a little bit closer. I'll give you some examples here.
but I think I'm gonna leave this video here because I'm getting wet and it's really cold. It was supposed to be warmer and sunny, uh, but that, yeah, that didn't happen. So thank you very much for watching. Let me know what you think about these photos and I will see you in the next video. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Bye. Ooh.